Hello, welcome back to Creative Frenzy. Um, today I wanted to try some mono printing. Um, I've been watching Dan Terrell's YouTube tutorials. He's a UK based artist and uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do some of my own. So that's what I did. I created a whole stack of them actually, <laughs> to be honest. And I wanted to use them in my um, collage and art books. So anyway, set these aside. I'm going to do a couple with you and see how they turn out and then uh, we'll go from there. So would you you can just use copy paper if you want to use it for collage. Um, the nearer the paper the better so you can actually not have too much bulk. I just made my frame um, out of a cereal box. All I'm going to do is tape my piece of paper. Now when I first did this it didn't quite work out the way I had hoped. <laughs> um, the way Dan did it, he did um, like drawings on a separate piece of paper and then drew, you know, so if you wanted to do the same um, kind of thing over and over, you know, you do like a template like this or something, you know, to do whatever with. But today, you know, uh, the other day it didn't work out the way I'd hoped, so Freehanding it is how I'm doing it. So you need yourself some toothpicks or <clears throat> I guess you could use a skewer. Some plastic to put your um, paint on. You could use just a, a Ziploc bag if you wanted to. You could do either one. And yes, this does get messy. So I've seen this done with oil paints. I've seen it done with... Um, Oh, what else? Acrylic, obviously. That's what I'm using. I'm just using... I got this on Amazon. It's the Meaden Acrylic Paint. I'm just using plain black. You could use any color, I guess, if you really wanted to. Um, he used a offset spatula. Um, for me, that just didn't work the way I would hoped. So I just use a roller. This probably would work a little bit better with some foam underneath, but I kind of like the, um, the oddness of the way the paint is. So you don't want too much because then you won't see your imprint too easily. So lay it on there very lightly and you can grab your toothpick or whatever else. Sort of line it up. Let's see, what are we going to draw? So I've been having fun with this. And just having some fun drawing. You know, you can use your imagination. You can do your favorite kind of thing. You can do, I don't know. And then you just sort of peek underneath and see what you are left with. What I like about this, it just creates this really kind of cool um, background. You don't have to draw anything if you don't want to. You could obviously just do... Um, just backgrounds itself you know like shapes or things like that but what I like about it now when you go to fill it in with watercolors or even diluted paints I have a whole tray of um, some of my favorite colors um, these are old yogurt drink containers so all I did was make a bunch of those so I can use them at any given time this is the perfect kind of project for that because you just put a bunch in a tray and away you go so that is a lot of fun. So let's try another one. Um, so this is sort of based on Paul Klee's style um, of painting or mono printing. He's a Swiss German artist. I looked it up on um, Google. It was really kind of interesting. So if you get a chance, look it up. 
I highly recommend trying different um, techniques. We use a lot of paper in our, you know, art journal, in our um, uh, junk journals. So these come in handy for different kinds of um, projects. Again, not too much paint. And then you can just have fun with it. So again, if you just want to use shapes, you absolutely could. But, you know, it all depends on what you like. You can do abstract, you can do something a bit more formal. But you get some really cool ideas once you start. It's very difficult to stop. All you're doing is basically mark making. But the effects are pretty spectacular, depending on what colors you use, you know, afterwards. So if you only wanted to do shapes, you absolutely could. You could do, you know, definitely more complex things. But the simpler the shapes, the better off your final product will be. Now, if you wanted to do something like this for, um, so I'm not going to put extra paint on here. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm just going to do squiggles, like almost automatic writing, and then just use this leftover bit of paint. It's really kind of cool for backgrounds, so... does dry because there's only a couple of layers on here but that's okay sometimes all you need is something a little bit lighter or you can come in and do some more so let's say we want to use a you know just some piece of plastic you could even use wax paper or um, parchment paper which would be kind of cool But the idea is to just, it's kind of, you know, interesting the different effects you can come up with. So again, you take your toothpick, or if you don't have a toothpick, you know, use the end of your paintbrush. So you do your little framework, but you can really see the different effects it has. You let those dry and then you can use watercolors or watered down acrylic, anything like that. I'm going to set this aside for now. So here's my little bear. <laughs> so I'm going to paint him. I have a little bit of paint left over. So let's start with a bit of brown. What I like about this is you really have that, um, that black color in behind that looks really cool. So there's a lot of texture. The more um, you get used to doing this, the more you have this cool effect of, you know, 
Oh, try it. You'll figure it out for yourself. It's really interesting, the different textures and the different um, striations in the background, which is really cool. So these paints have been sitting around for a bit, so they're a little bit dried up. So you can't really see the trees in this one, but you know, if you just painted it green, you could. But I wanted something a little bit different. I think these would be really cool. Um, you know, if you do a series of art prints, you can hang them up in your home or a nursery. Um, you could do birthday cards or any cards, really. You could do your own postcards. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, that's the idea behind it. And then you have some really cool pictures to um, play with. So that's what we are going to do. So now that is set aside. Again, if you have paint left over, you don't know what to do with it. You know, you could just go like this. <laughs> just if you don't have a frame, just go like this. If you don't want to deal with a frame, just do plastic. And just have fun with it. You really have some cool effects. So it's almost like um, jelly printing, just a little bit different. So if you don't have jelly plate, this is a good way to get some interesting lines and interesting uh, backgrounds going. Because you can use this for any kind of color that you want to apply to the uh, paper. So that's kind of fun, because you can just splash paint on it if you want to. And get some really cool effects. That one's not watered down enough. You could use, you know, spray paint. You could use a stencil on top of this. That'd be kind of cool too. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you because that's one thing I discovered over the weekend is mono printing. Again, that's Dan Tyrell's, uh, a UK-based artist. Check him out on YouTube. It's really cool. Okay, so back to my original plan. <laughs> if I can find a spot for everything. All right. So this is my art book. So this is where I wanted to use those mono prints in. So this is one of the pages that I did last year. And this time I used um, packing paper with white paint. So the same kind of idea as these, but now I'm going to use these. Uh, where's my empty page? There we go. All right. That's what we're gonna do. So, I don't know about the rest of you, but today is a wintry winter day. It's a little bit crazy out. We had like high winds, really cold for the last week, and now we have tons of snow. Getting to do groceries this morning was nearly an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> it was a little crazy, let's put it that way. So what I like about this packing paper is that it's nice and thin and you can use them any which way you possibly could and it's free. And I do like the idea of painting them a little bit just to give that a little bit more extra background. And again, you know, it's it's all about finding whatever you have around the house. If you don't have a lot of collage papers, then by all means, make your own. That is half the fun, is using up what you have and creating something new and different out of it. 
being creative is the goal, always. I find too, this just creates a little bit more interest in my pages. Um, this book it was a photo album. Um, I just took out all the plastic where the pictures would have sat. The photos, right? I just took all that out and then I fixed the pages as best as I could with some washi tape in case they ripped or whatever. Which, you know, it does. It's paper. And then I just um, you started gluing in different papers. Uh, all of my jelly prints that I created, they had to have somewhere to go. So I started creating this collage kind of art book that I could use as a, a journal or showcase you know my more interesting pieces if that's what I choose to do I don't know I haven't decided fully yet I've just been having fun and creating so I recommend anyone you know it's like if you have an old book lying around or even you know like I do, photo album. Well, try something with it. It's a lot of fun. And it allows you to be creative without expensive, you know, resources kind of thing. So I usually try to do a double, a, a double page spread. Because it just looks nicer. To my eye, anyway. Um... And you can fill in the gaps or you could leave some white showing through. It's entirely up to you. Uh, sometimes I leave some white, sometimes I don't. Depends on how I feel or how much paper I have left over. <laughs> That's usually the indicator. But the idea is just to have some fun. Um, if you don't have glue sticks, so you can obviously use, you know, gesso or Mod Podge, I guess. But glue stick, you don't have to wait for drying time, which is kind of nice. You can just sort of go ahead and plunk it down. Um, try to look for more interesting pieces. When I try to rip up these strips, you know... Try to rip them unevenly so that you can have some interesting lines going on. Don't be too precise. It's a lot more fun when you just get to, you know, lose all abandon and just rip away. You get your kid to rip up the paper <laughs> and then glue it down you know it's like this is an activity they could even do that'd be a lot of fun you know those of us who have little one well i don't have a little one at home anymore but you know if you have a little one at home and they don't know what to do give them an old book to glue into make sure that they know it has to be an old book not just anything from the library and then you know have at it it's a lot of fun you could use magazine strips, you could do anything you really wanted to. But a lot of us have been ordering through Amazon and other online stores, so this is a good way to use up all that packaging. You're paying for it, so you might as well use it instead of tossing it. So, and this is where it gets interesting because you get to overlap things, right? Again, if you want a lot of white space, then leave white space. If you don't, then don't. And you can absolutely cross over because it just reads more as one page at that point, which is kind of cool.
Again, when I use my um, art journals or, you know, this is more of an art junk journal kind of thing. I don't really have an idea of what I want to do right away. So it's kind of nice to sort of leave your pages blank. You could write in them if you wanted to. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So it's kind of nice to just prepare the backgrounds and then you can sort of play with it later on. And if this is too much talking for you, I apologize. It's been a while since I've done videos, so I'm still getting back into the swing of things. So I've been making junk journals and painting, drawing faces, and now mono printing, which is really cool. I had a lot of fun with that and jelly printing and all the different techniques out there that are so cool and there's so many good artists online these days that you know if you want different ideas you absolutely could study them all and do a different idea on a daily basis and still not have enough to fill your books or you know fill several books rather So I'm not overly concerned about all the little pieces. I think I might just leave it at that. You could absolutely fill it up more. Or if you find a contrasting paper later on, you could absolutely fill that in. But I think I'll leave it at that. So now I want to get some prints and put those on there. So these are some of the other ones that I've made. No abstract. You could do landscapes. This is really abstract. It was one of those ones that didn't quite work out, but the effect is still really cool. So for background or just for collage, it's really interesting. I think what I'll do is I'll do two abstracts. So again, you could leave these the way they are. You could trim them. Could even I know sacrilege we get rid of them <laughs> if you're not framing them you can just sort of put them in any which way you like that's kind of what I like about doing your own kind of thing because you get to just play just sort of have to figure out how you want to place them and you can do another color in behind if you wanted to really make it pop but I kind of want it to blend in so beauty of these abstract pieces. You can put them in any which way you like, which is kind of cool. Excuse me. There's nothing worse than running out of glue <laughs> in your glue stick. I was like, no, I must get all of it. All right, there we go. Oops. Come on. There we go. And it's got a little bit of texture to it also because of the acrylic paint, which is really cool. So from here, you can leave it as is, 
or you could take a pen, a black pen, which I'm so fond of, or you could use a paint marker. Hmm. Let's see. I do have a black one, so maybe we'll do. I got these at Walmart. They're not a bad price. So here, you know, you can just do kind of a rough outline and frame it in this way. That's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, see it? Yeah. So that is how I would do it. Um, you know, everybody will have their own way of doing things. Let's see what's the main color in here. Pink, basically. Oh, these lids are so difficult sometimes. Okay. It's quite a bright pink, but I like to just fill in these little areas. You could use white. I think this will make it stand out a little bit more. This is kind of cool. Now, a journal like this, um, I call it an art journal, but it's not really, you know, a mixed media journal or anything. Well, I guess it is technically, but it's more of a, like, um, techniques and different things that you think of that you want to try out. It's a good way to practice different um, artistic techniques, you know or form an idea and run with it kind of thing so that is it guys um again you know i'll actually maybe i'll give you a little tour if this dries quickly enough i'll give you an idea of how i did this so basically this is a photo album i took all the plastic out and then i just started putting all my different um, papers in here so you know little off pieces that I would cut in different shapes I've made some pockets and it, it reads like a junk journal but it's an artistic junk journal I guess an art junk journal that's what I'm calling it I guess and just having different things that I've made and putting them inside of here places to write and pockets to put different things in and just having fun with shapes and colors so again you know if you have an old book lying around this is a good way to use up your scraps um, trying different techniques if you have different papers or some jelly prints that you really really like you know you can absolutely do something like this with it because you can put different photos in here if you wanted to or you could just keep it as an artistic journal and just have fun with it and not everything has to have a writing space you could just fill it in like this this is all just torn up pieces of scrap paper so I'm just you know so if you do make tags you can make pockets in here for tags that you've created that you wanted to try out um, just again all the different jelly prints that I really, really like the colors of. I tried to put the coffee dyed paper and, you know, some scrapbook paper all together. And just having fun with pattern and color. <laughs> so you can try out different theories and things like that. So I thought this would be fun to share with you. And I hope you start your own little art junk journal.
That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Whether I like it or not, that's what it is now. Art junk journal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.